good evening team pli and to all the participants i am really glad to spend my uh, saturday evening with a, uh, with a lot of enthusiastic young lawyers and uh, you know future lawyers so i hope you are all interested in learning more about the uh, learning more about legal writing as a profession so let's go ahead and uh, start with the topic uh what exactly is legal writing so when you talk about uh, legal writing it's not like your regular content writing there is a lot of uh, difference in the same so what exactly is legal writing i'm sure you all must be aware on how the pandemic has changed the dynamics in all the professions a lot of entry level jobs have literally vanished like uh, you know when i started my practice in 2010 the role of juniors was very limited then what to then you know what role or what contribution they had probably 10 years before that because it was in 2010 that we started getting air journals electronically we started getting scc uh, your supreme court cases electronically and once you get these case journals electronically searching case laws was like a matter of few minutes you could search case laws in few minutes you didn't have to sit in the library throughout the day physically sit search for the ratio then compare analyze and see okay these are the top 10 judgments that apply to my case so the requirement for having a junior or the requirement for having an assistant has been gradually reducing what happened during the pandemic was that uh, there were no physical courts you did not need a junior to sit with you and do the drafting because uh, you know it's very difficult to teach someone drafting across the table you know across the internet you have to have that person you have to sit together with that person brainstorm and then teach drafting so when the pandemic hit and everything became digital overnight we can say that the requirement for having a junior or an assistant reduced because what happened is a lot of companies came up with the solution that the juniors were physically providing that is the job of a law junior was to help you with case laws was to help you with drafts so what a, a group of lawyers started doing is they started providing ready made templates draft templates they started providing you with customized um, you know your cause list a lot of software companies came up with office management softwares which previously was taken care of by juniors so slowly and steadily technology replaced human beings that was something that was bound to happen but with the pandemic it just happened within one year last one year said that you know the requirement for content writing for good legal content has also improved you need to remember and understand the difference between legal content writing your general content writing and your content writing for physical books or your content writing for physical submission uh, for your hard copies like your journals or your papers when i talk about legal content writing you are writing only about law related topics or sociology related topics which are going to affect the society for example the practice of patriarchy has a huge influence on a lot of laws in our country we have a lot of personal laws and customs which have again a huge impact on how the laws are created in our country so when you are writing about law you cannot just think about law okay your ipc says section number so and so uh, suppose your ipc says uh, about grievous hurt okay let's uh, talk about grievous hurt your ipc says that section so and so talks about grievous hurt these are the in and out uh, in and around surrounding sections so when you are writing a legal article you cannot just write that okay this is the section this is the interpretation how it is given in bare act no you cannot do that when you are writing a legal article suppose on grievous hurt you have to remember the person who is reading your article may be a lawyer may be a law student may be a person who has got no idea about law so your language has to be very simple it has to be something that people need to understand okay that people will understand the uh, biggest 
problem of in our country that uh, you know why people are scared of lawyers or why people are afraid to approach lawyers because we lawyers have unnecessarily complicated it okay we need to remember that you don't need to use a lot of fancy words or you know those legal terminologies when you're doing legal content writing because once the content is on net on over the internet that is once your content is on the cloud you don't know who is going to read it so the more you can make it simpler the more you can make people friendly the more it will help you the reason being said is because when you take up legal writing as a profession it is not only important that you write good content it is also important that a lot of people read that good content okay so ultimately even if you say that i have written 1000 articles i have written 10000 articles it doesn't matter but you know when you say that i have written one article which had got 5000 views or i have written two articles which have 10000 views that is what matters a lot you know these informations about how many views a particular article has or how many uh, you know what is the da da is a domain authority that is what we consider or your alexa ranking does your website have these are the terminologies that will matter when you write uh, when you do your content writing for legal and these are all you know terminologies that are available these are all the uh, rankings that are available in public domain so i just need to type the site or i just need to type the link to check okay this is how much this person's article has been read this is what the reach has been from so and so region so many people have read this article so all the analytics are available in public domain and free so you know with legal writing it's like your report card is already out there in the public so that is one thing that you need to remember that when you're writing legal content you have to remember it has to be people friendly you cannot write all technicalities because you don't know who is going to read it next thing is for whom will you write okay one you can write for common people two your content writing or your legal writing can be for uh, students three your content writing can be for those preparing for competitive exams for example your an academy your byju's and you have a lot of apps which help you prepare for upsc examination they need you know law content in depth a lot of public departments need law content in depth so you know those are the people who are going to employ you in future and as i have said that everything is slowly and steadily transforming digitally so a lot of classes or educational apps a lot of educational apps are coming up every day they are the people who will require these young legal content writers okay one more thing that you need to remember and which is the most important thing that you need to remember is there are millions of articles that will be available over the internet for example if i want to read on article 15 it's not one or two if i go to a library and search for article 15 i'll probably get 10 books on the constitution of india but if i am typing article 15 constitution of india there are going to be at least millions of pages that are going to pop up so your competition is very high over the internet that is one thing that you need to remember and drill it in your brain because that is what is going to help you in the future to stand up your content has to stand out you cannot expect to write the same you you are not expect to write the same old you know dry content uh, even though there must be tens and thousands of people who have already written on the constitution of india you can always change your interpretation you can always have your own say you can always think or look at it in a different perspective so one of the benefits of legal writing is it helps you present your perspective before the world okay so even though there is a tough competition compared to what competition you would have had offline it still gives you an opportunity to express your views now a few moments ago i told you that uh, content writing for online is different content writing for offline is different where uh, the reason being simple as i just mentioned there are millions of sites when i do my google search i'll get around 10 to 50 pages on my you know search engine saying that okay article 15 constitution of india a b c d e okay i'll just read whatever is the brief that is presented to me 
this article talks about the case law this article will talk about you know reservation this article will talk about why reservation should be there this article will talk about why reservation should not be there and so and so you know uh, when i do a google search i get a gist of all the articles okay i'll just click on any of the links that i feel is appropriate for my research i'm going to click it read it now as we know that in india even today one of the biggest problem that we have is the low speed internet so i cannot expect my reader to spare more than 2 to 5 minutes that is why these days even before you click a website for example your linkedin shows that it's a 4 minute read it's a 5 minute read it's a 2 minute read so you have to understand your content has to be so crisp it has to be so interesting everything has to be covered in those 2 or 3 or 5 minutes 5 minutes is the max that you know content reading time will be there whereas when you are writing for a book or when you are writing for a journal your content can go on for pages because if i am going to pick up a journal i am not going to do it when i am in a hurry i am definitely going to sit down i'm going to uh, you know be more in a relaxed mood and therefore when you write for a legal magazine which is a hard copy your content can go from 2000 to 5000 words but if i am writing for something online it cannot be more than 500 to 1000 words because your 500 to 1000 words is approximately 3 to 4 minutes of reading and that is a maximum attention span that people have these days online okay uh, i'm sure as law students and uh, students who are subject to uh, students who you know who are attending classes online you people know what is the attention span that you have more than me so you know that's why it's more important that your content is engaging and people are people are uh, you know more engaged with your content okay moving further okay if you all have any doubts so you can uh, either raise your hands or uh, you can put your queries in the chat box so i'll try and address the same during the session itself okay so we just spoke about how digitization has changed the perspective we just spoke about the academic uh, requirement and you know the difference between physical uh, sorry online content writing and offline content writing now let's talk about the most important aspect that is the skill set that you require one thing is uh, your drafting and your content writing is not something that you can learn overnight it takes years of practice now i'll just tell you a bit about myself i have a degree in uh, mass media i have done journalism i have worked with a lot of uh, uh, media houses and startup because uh, i knew people there so that's how i started getting work i do more work in uh, ipr that's more of documentation so when i started content writing i started doing it more i, I started first writing about parenting uh, started sharing my experiences on parenting and that is how my content writing journey had begun it took me 3 years to understand how the whole content writing system works either you can work as a content writer for someone else or you can have your own blog and then start working on it for example i have my own blog that is uh, www.aishwarasandeep.com and uh, earlier i used to just write on my own but now i have law students and i teach them content writing on how they can learn content writing uh, i give them an internship of one month and in that one month i try to train them because one month is next to impossible time limit for anybody to learn content writing it takes at least six months to one year depending on how uh, on depending on what your strengths or weaknesses are okay so that is how i began my content writing journey moving further we were talking about the skill sets that are required for content writing so one is definitely a good language uh, when i talk about legal content writing it's not limited only to english if you are good in vernacular languages you can put in any other languages just write it you don't have to mandatorily write in english because everything even though it is getting digitized simultaneously people are making information available in all the languages so if you can write in hindi marathi gujarati tamil telugu malayalam 
it's absolutely fine just go ahead and write it so your first skill set should be decent language i wouldn't say good language or a great language it is a decent language that is there should be no grammatical errors there should be decent grammar because uh, i do get a lot of whatsapp messages by law students where instead of full stop they tend to use apostrophe so you know if you are going to do the same in a legal article people are going to blacklist you they are going to put all sort of negative and mean comments against you so you have to be careful about your punctuation marks next thing you have to know is your subject matter for example if i am writing about something like a dowry okay if i am writing about dowry i need to know what is the history of dowry how dowry is perceived in north india how dowry is perceived in south india what happens when dowry is not given i need to understand the sociological aspect i need to uh, understand the legal aspect i need to understand the impact of the practice that is happening in our society okay uh, how dowry is an evil whether dowry is good whether dowry is bad Uh, dowry deaths have happened. Uh, whether law that our society, uh, that our legal system already has, is it sufficient? You know, for example, the Dowry Prohibition Act and the Domestic Violence Act is also known as legal terrorism, because these two are the most misused acts. You know, uh, because generally those who need remedies or those who you know genuinely want uh, relief by the help of these acts, those cases are never registered. but those who have money and influence tend to misuse these two acts a lot so these two acts are also known as legal terrorism and you know the amount of fake cases that you have in domestic violence and uh, uh, dowry prohibition is immense it's only increasing day by day so if i am writing about dowry prohibition i need to first pick up what is my thought on the same whether i am going to write on the practices of dowry Uh, whether i'm going to write what is the solution for this dowry problem whether i'm going to write about the laws that are applicable to uh, this dowry problem or whether i'm going to take a particular case law or a particular legislation and then i'm going to interpret it so on one topic of dowry there are around 5 to 7 perspectives which i can include one thing you have to remember and this is something that i've learned with experience never write or never force yourself to write something that is trending okay if you believe in a particular cause if you believe in a particular thought only then write about until and unless you are employed of course if you are employed you have to, it is your job to write on okay but uh, generally when you are writing on something that is sociological or uh, something for example uh, when you are writing about feminism you have to believe in feminism before you write about it you have to understand the spirit of feminism or uh, whether you are writing about reservation if you are pro reserve if you want to write an article on pro reservation you have to personally believe in pro reservation because what happens is ultimately it reflects on your article okay ultimately you can see that ultimately you can see that you know okay yeah this person believes in this cause and that is why i am going to read more articles about this person because this person is very genuine you know you have to be that pure you have to be that transparent when you are writing so your personal thoughts your personal experience was, will always reflect in your writing so apart from your good what do you say your good language skills your good grammatical skills your um, belief in the topic one more thing that is most important is your interpretation skill for example uh, i remember in my uh, as i told you you know when i was hiring interns i got a girls article and it was on how article 15 was completely wrong i <laughs> i literally uh, you know banged in my head because that interpretation was so 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 wrong she had written an entirely different perspective of reservation it was neither pro reservation it was neither against reservation she was like it something like reservation should not only exist 
and uh, how article 15 is ultra virus of the constitution ha huh? how there is a clash between article 14 and article 15 probably her idea was something different but uh, the way it was interpreted was you know uh, the way it was interpreted was i just had to put it in my trash bin i generally don't put articles in my trash bin but uh, that interpretation was that bad so when you are interpreting an article you have to be thorough see because as i told you there there is a huge competition out there once you write a wrong article once you write an article that is factually wrong that is uh, actually you know interpreted wrong you lose out your audience once you lose out your audience you lose out, lose out your following it's very difficult to gain them back together okay so you have to be thorough with your interpretation you have to be thorough with your understanding of law and that is not something that you will learn overnight that is something that you will learn only with time okay that is another thing uh, another skill set that uh, you have to understand and always remember articles for any website cannot be more than 500 to 1000 words or 1500 at the max not more than your articles have to be crisp if you are saying something use case laws use previous judgments that is something that will support you okay so moving further the most important aspect that i'm sure everybody is waiting for that is what do i do with legal writing will i get a job that is the most important aspect i'm sure a lot of people have joined the session only to understand that where will i get a job with the uh, legal writing okay one a lot of publications that were offline earlier are now moving towards online so yes you can check with the publication houses that is one place where you can get a job second you can keep looking out for uh, places such as this is if you are looking for an employment second you can look out for places such as uh, law octopus uh, for places such as an academy places such as byju's vedantu uh, those are the edutech companies which provide training for upsc students and uh, law students etc the third uh, perspective is you can also check with colleges and academicians if uh, you know they need any assistance with legal writing and content writing these opportunities are very less but today if you see the most uh, trending or the most hot and happening places where you can get a job in legal writing as it is edutech apps because they are funded you know there's a very good funding that is happening in these in the edutech field in india so they'll pay you very well provided you are also good okay and that is also an asterisk mark that you also need to be good in okay so this is where you will get your job after that the most important uh, question i'm sure a lot of people will be having is how much will i get paid that totally depends on how good you are but uh, a normal content writer starts with around 25000 per month that is the normal uh, startup salary that a lot of people have that also depends on pay you are joining which company you are joining okay next moving on further one important aspect that i wanted to cover was how you can start writing on your own okay on uh, starting your own website so it's very simple go to blogspot or go to wordpress you can have you create your own site keep on uploading your article share it on social media that is one way in uh, which you can start legal writing on your own and share your article thoughts with the society okay uh, podcast are also something that's new these days and that's in trend so you can go to spotify start your own podcast and uh, just keep on talking about your experiences and your interpretation of it so in short that's all what my session was today about uh, if you all have any query you can just uh, ask me directly or just put it in the chat box i've also got a couple of queries uh, how to develop okay. vocabulary legal writing uh, any tips for improving legal drafting uh, such as some good books for it one thing for good vocabulary in general you have to read 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 and read that's the only solution 
you know earlier when i was preparing for competitive exams this is what somebody had suggested me and uh, i try and do it today okay the exercise that i'm going to tell you all is a bit boring is a bit hectic i'm sure everybody has got a dictionary at home right um, just read five words from the dictionary take up take out your time you know uh, in a day it just takes you 10 to 15 minutes just sit and read five words that's it so uh, developing your vocabulary developing your writing skills is not something that's going to be happening overnight you have to keep on reading 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 that's one thing second thing read judgments reading judgments is uh, one of the best ways to learn legal writing that is what i personally believe and uh, that is what has helped me a lot okay instead of books because see this field is something new and uh, till now there is no handbook or there is no guide per se for uh, legal writing so one thing is you can read a lot of judgments reading judgments help you to get a good perspective you can read judgments by uh, justice krishna iyer his judgments are his judgments are too good his interpretation skills his language you know his thought process is extremely beautiful so if you can just read up his judgments and understand that will help a lot more than the books okay tips for improving legal drafting uh, as i said see legal drafting is something that again you need to practice what i used to do is see legal drafting doesn't mean you have to wait for a client to come to you to uh, along with the papers so that you can learn to make a draft okay what you can do is you can talk about you have your cell phone bill right your cell phone bill hard copy behind there is an agreement read that agreement read the leave and license agreement read your rent agreement read your sale agreement just ask for agreements from people and read only reading is something that is going to help you in this okay uh, next is uh, how can we make sure that we are able to produce more content within given time frame once again the solution is practice second is how i start writing now as if i am uh, for example you know we just spoke about an article on dowry so if i am writing an article on dowry what i'll do is i'll just write dowry and then i'll put a perspective history of dowry second has the practice increased decreased that is one more article i can write third is law related to dowry that is the third uh, third article i will write uh the fourth article is uh, you know what is the solution for the same the fifth is legal remedies for the same okay uh these are the five perspectives i'll select one perspective suppose i'll say solution for dowry i take my solution for dowry and then i'm like Ki, okay what are my pointers education for uh, second is uh increase legal age for marriage third uh, increase communication public awareness how do you do it public awareness you can have videos you can have uh, whatsapp messages you can use your social media so these are my pointers once my pointers are ready i can i just need to flesh it flesh it out this is how i am going to prepare for an article okay once i keep on doing it again and again again and again this whole routine is fixed in my mind so i ensure that i don't miss out any points i ensure that my research is proper because what happens is the reason why a lot of people take time in writing an article is because they spend a lot of time on research research is an integral part okay research is a very important part of your writing but you need to check how much time you are spending on research you cannot go round and round round and round and round and you have to limit the amount of time that you are giving for your research once you do that you will be able to give maximum articles in minimum time okay ma'am any res- res- uh, resources that you can suggest for recommend for researching nic.in your uh, indian kanun. Uh, indian kanun.com baran bench these are all good places where you can get good content for your uh, deem appropriate uh, such as berax textbooks commentaries one is berax and second is judgments judgments you will get on indiancanon.com that is where you get it for free they also have good 
a lot of good legal articles that you can read uh, then you have you do have a lot of websites i'll just try and send it across if you can go through the same uh, ma'am the next question is how to make the uh, content more appealing one write only facts don't write anything uh, that is you know that is a lie that is one suggestion one tip that i would like to give all of you all don't write fiction uh, remember the differentiation between a fact and a fiction always when you're doing a legal writing it is fact you have to write about facts second your presentation has to be very crisp your articles have to be justified your articles have to have appropriate quotes appropriate judgments you cannot just randomly put any judgment next is the content time frame that is what i said 500 to 1000 words is the max that you can have you cannot have more words so you have to understand to whom you are right your language should depend on that you don't have to use a lot of shakespeare uh, language or you know flowery language for legal content writing but yes simpler and effective language that is what is important for legal content writing okay Uh, ma'am, this is a question from the plea team. Um, okay. That, uh, ma'am, can you um, like tell us that how does one allot the time? That ten percent for research. So, ma'am, can you? Uh, how do I say? Can you? Uh, yeah. So if yeah. I, I'll just tell you how I work. There is no uh, mantra. There is no formula. So when I'm eating or uh, before going to bed, what I do is I go on Twitter. I go on Quora. these are two places where i get my content for legal writing i just read the trending topics whatever is there i get different perspectives different you know thoughts of different people i then go and uh, check what is the legality i do match the following of legality and what is currently happening and then the next day probably when i sit to write an article it's a 30 minute job for me that is provided i get my full concentration to do this so i don't a lot a very specific time for research research is something that should be continuous and that should be going on you have to keep on reading keep on reading in a day you need to a lot at least 2 hours exclusively for reading and that reading has to be done without any burden that reading has to be done without you thinking about 10 things it has to be exclusive that is how you start your research you cannot sit and do research on one topic of tauri or on one topic of bvs or for 5 months that won't help you that will help you when you're doing a moot court that will help you when you're doing your research paper but when you are when you are doing it as a profession your reading has to be continuous in a day you have to spend 2 hours reading on any topic any legal topic that is how you are going to prepare your brain for this so i would say how you allot your time is 50% drafting and 50% research because if you don't have good research you cannot draft properly so that is how the whole balance goes okay where can we search for draft for its purpose to start off the best place to search for draft is you have a lot of agreements in and around your ghar mein dekh lo you will ask your parents for your sale deed ask your parents for your rent agreement because i'll tell you why these standard agreements will not help you initially when you are looking at a completely fleshed out agreement you understand the purpose for these agreements right if it is a sale agreement of the house that your parents have bought you know that okay they had paid so and so consideration okay this is the land uh, that was there uh, this is the you know this is how uh, the municipality had given permission for this is how this had given the permission for everything everything whereas when you look at a blank agreement which has nothing okay, how a blank agreement will look is uh, this agreement has been entered into between mr abc and mr xyz so that is not going to teach you that much how much a uh, reading a proper agreement is going to teach you so look at good hard core agreements in and around that's what i said look behind your cell phone bills you have your share shareholding ka prospectors that come okay your shareholding uh, your ipo forms that come in even those are all good agreements 
and basic the draft reference agreement the cheapest place and the best place that you can find is behind your cpc your cpc barrack ke piche you have all the forms form number 1 is your plaint and then form number 2 is your written statement and all so behind your cpc that is one place where you can get the draft otherwise you can purchase good drafting books but good drafting books are helpful only when you are in the field these you know blank agreements or these template agreements will help you only when you are in the field and only when you are practicing when you are a fresh person you don't know how a drafting goes on the templates are not much of a help be very yeah. uh, ma'am one last question that i want to ask you is that yeah. as a trend uh, we see now students you know they submit their assignments okay in yeah. india we don't have plagiarism softwares with or universities don't have and as a trend now what the law students have been doing is that they make their websites and upload these assignments on the website as a content which is mostly copy paste so ma'am can you uh, share with the participants the consequences of this practice okay yeah thank you so much isha for reminding me because that is something that i faced uh, recently what happened was as i told you i have a lot of law students so one person sent me an article and i just uploaded it and the moment it was published his classmate contacted me and said that this person has copied my agreement uh, assignment so he what he had done is he had put on his friend's assignment as his so this is not even the general uh, copy paste that i'm going to talk about but uh, as i write uh, as i told you before also see internet is much smarter than what you think once people feel see people can figure out the people who are regular readers they can figure out which is a copied content and which is not a copied content so there are a lot of websites where you can you know get your articles checked for free for example on grammarly you can just check it for free for plagiarism and uh, there are a couple of other websites but i generally use grammarly so plagiarism is a very big demon and uh, one more thing to be very frank the universities and the institutions are because uh, they are pressurizing students so much into submissions that you know they don't learn the skill set of writing or researching they are just like okay copy paste copy paste copy paste copy paste kar diya ho gaya assignment so the students technically don't learn anything in the 3 years of school because they're so busy in satisfying the requirements of the colleges that there is no time understand the law there is no time to understand the uh, procedures or there is no time to understand the drafting so that is not the students fault it is the education system's fault which has been encouraging plagiarism for so long one thing you can do is be honest to yourself avoid copy paste because if you do copy paste you won't be on the first page of google when somebody searches okay for a good seo you need original content Uh, your copy paste will help you create a website but it may not help you in getting audience it will not help you in surviving in the long run. to survive in the long run you need good lawyers uh, you need good knowledge you need good content because ultimately content is the king so that's it. okay uh, some names of good authors for legal drafting uh, for legal drafting i personally use there is a book by an author called as retavde that is who book i have been using as a reference for legal drafting ma'am if you want you can use this platform to share about your internship the one month internship program okay. that you offer yes ma'am sure i have my own website uh, that's www.ashwarasandeep.com and uh, where a lot of law students join me as interns and uh, i teach them legal writing i teach them content writing and legal drafting so how it happens is i conduct a session every monday and uh, friday now because of some health issues uh, temporarily those are suspended uh, the internship starts on the 1st of every month so for september it will start on september 25th that is what is my plan because there was some sudden crisis and everything is a bit uh, delayed here and there so the internship is for one month and uh, i provide them with an experience letter on completion of a certain number of articles so that is how it happens and if you are interested in the internship you can just email me your cv on secondinnings.hr@gmail.com so that's where you can get in touch with me. 
Yeah, so, so ma'am, with this, we come to the end of today's webinar. Many thanks, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Team Pli, and also thank you to the participants who have been a good audience. Uh, there was no mischief or anything. So, thank you so much to the organizers and.